rest for the perimeter of the rhombus, which essentially then is the distance all the way around, okay? Now we're given the longest diagonal, okay? And the shortest diagonal. But what's good is, for the rhombus, is that the diagonals actually will be bisected, okay? When they cross each other. So, um, if I draw them in, right? If I draw the diagonals inside the actual shape, okay? Do dotted line, if broken line if you want, and then across where they meet actually they are literally bisected you can see that can't you from visually just looking at it so if they bisected that means that this length here is going to be 9 okay because it's going to be half of 18 and this length here then is going to be well half of 13 which is 6.5 and what we can do then is appreciate where they bisect here also at right angle okay um, we can use Pythagoras then to work out this side here, okay? Because we have now got a triangle, haven't we? Where, you know, you could call this side little A, this side little B, and of course then the longer side C. So if I work out C, you then just appreciate by symmetry, every side's going to be the same, because that's the case with the rhombus, of course. Every side measures the same. So applying Pythagoras' theorem, okay, here, you literally do a squared plus b squared is c squared. Um, so we've got 6.5 squared plus 9 squared equals to c squared. So I'll type that into my calculator. And I get 123.25 is what c squared is. So then c then will be the square root of that. And I get 11.1. Okay, we'll go for one decimal place. Okay, so then if I know this is 11.1, well, of course, the other sides are going to be 11.1. So to get the perimeter, I just need to add 11.1 four times, okay? Or we could think of it as four lots of 11.1, which will be 44.4 .4 centimeters.